Gil Lopez from Romero Cruz Elementary uh, give us our, our, our Pledge of Allegiance. What grade are you in, Gil? Um, I'm in fourth grade. Fourth grade? Okay, yeah. when you speak right now, get really close to the microphone, okay? Okay. All right, go ahead, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Gil. If you can all remain standing, Erica Wakeling, our police chaplain, is going to give us our invocation. Thank you again, Gil. Thank you, Mayor. I'm uh, pleased to be here as the chaplain, but also as one of the dads, uh, one of these volleyball players. So this is a, a fun double shot for me tonight. So let's, let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you uh, for this great city of Santa Ana, and we thank you for the leaders and servants that are here to, to serve this city. I pray that you would give wisdom, Lord, that you would give uh, this meeting a, a great sense of, of unity together and that we would uh, just continue to see uh, wonderful things happen in this city. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If I can have representatives from the Nam Vietnamese Eater Eatery, if you can please come forward at this time and just stand with me here to the right and join me. Standing to my right are representatives from Nam Vietnamese Eatery, and it's a new restaurant that opened here in the city, really right across the street from Santa Ana College, right there on 17th and Bristol. And they're doing something in association with um, Earth Day. And let me read this uh, about you all a little bit, then if you'd want to speak before I present the proclamation, I'd like for you to say a few words. Earth Day is an annual event. Uh, on April 22nd, that celebrated in more than 192 countries to demonstrate support for environmental protection. It was created in 1970 by Yaylor Nelson, a U.S. Senator from Wisconsin, after he witnessed the ravages of a 1969 massive oil spill in Santa Barbara, California. Earth Day broadens the base of support for environmental programs rekindles public uh, commitment and builds community activism around the world through a broad range of events and activities promoting environmental protection. Earth Day has become the largest civic event in the world, celebrated simultaneously around the globe by people of all backgrounds, faiths, and nationalities. More than a billion people participate in Earth Day every year. The City of Santa Ana recognizes its responsibility to preserve and protect the environment and the importance of environmentally responsible businesses, such as, because you might be saying, well, what's a restaurant got to do with Earth Day? Now let me, for a moment, feature uh, Nam Vietnamese Eatery. Nam, Nam Vietnamese Eatery is a new, fresh, casual restaurant that opened in Santa Ana in August 2014. The concept of Nam uh, emerged from a desire to introduce the community to fresh, delicious, healthy, affordable Vietnamese food, also with a minimal impact on the environment. So, you know, where they source their food, uh, you know, buying local, promoting local, environmentally friendly, organic, all this is part of what they do. Nam Vietnamese Eatery promotes this environmentally friendly practice through its use of uh, compostable paper goods and also eco-friendly products like your, your, your cups and things or bowls, they're biodegradable, and when we throw them away, they don't harm the planet like other things do. They believe in taking care of our planet and the people living on it. NAM has been involved in several programs to help our community and, and currently offers two scholarships to Santa Ana College 
and there they also sponsor the basketball teams. So look, it's good for a restaurant that doesn't have to do all these things that they're doing to, to create this consciousness and to say we can all do something every day to make Earth Day uh, very meaningful and and look with all the problems on the planet and all the things we're seeing happening wrong in in mother nature um, there's certainly something more that we can all do and here's a good example of what Nam Vietnamese eatery is doing and also by the way the food's really good my my son goes there and brings back you know to go dishes he's he's a uh, vegan and you have a lot of vegan plates and all that it's very, very good cuisine. So with that, before I give you the proclamation, would either one of you like to say a few words? I mean, I guess we can, you, said, you did a good job at talking about our concept, but like um, he mentioned, we use compostable containers only, so there's no plastic, there's no tree, and everything that we use, we don't use foam either, or plastic bags. So when you come and eat at our place, you're also supporting that idea. Uh, so I hope that for those of you who don't know about us, we're uh, right across from the college, in the Bristol Marketplace near Starbucks. So we hope that you can come and visit us and give us a try. Thank you. Well, look, if you, you can step over here. I think you have a photographer. Maybe we can. You ever take some photos? But somehow we ended up with two. But it's good. One, one is a, a certificate of recognition to the restaurant, and you can obviously hang it there with pride. But the other one is specifically talking about Earth Day and the work that you do. So congratulations, and thank you, thank you very much for your work. Councilman Roman Reina, if you can come on down, sir, and if uh, the volleyball team he, uh, from Calvary Christian School, if you're here, please come on down, and I'll now turn things over to Councilman Reina. Well, they were ready. They were ready to run. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Fantastic. We're gonna ask them to come on all up. Don't be shy. All the way on up. You know, uh, many know that, that youth are definitely my passion and, and my focus. And when we, when we work with them and we plant that seed of change and we watch it cultivate, it turns into beautiful things. And in our community, the one that I definitely uh, talk about is Suavecito. You watch those kids just absolutely grow. And today we have the next generation of leaders right behind us uh, and championships when it comes to specific sports. Sports is an incredible uh, educational component. It teaches you t uh, discipline. It teaches you uh, teamwork. It teaches you determination and to come overcome obstacles, that perseverance, to overcome and overcome and overcome and not stop. And in this particular case, these young ladies over at Calvary uh, Christian Church uh, has come into the championship, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's give them a round of applause for the girls volleyball team and winning the second Champions League championship. So real briefly about uh, Calvary Christian School, the athletic program has been established over 30 years, comp uh, comprising of fifth graders through eighth graders, which serve in a multiple of sports. Today we have the volleyball team. This year's team was very successful. This year's sports program was very successful as the boys uh, and girls elementary basketball team uh, placed second in the league. So let's give them a round of applause as well. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask the coach to come on up and share a few moments uh, about this, this season or some championships. Someone want to come on up and share? No pressure, no pressure. Um, hi. So my girls, as you can see, we have like a bunch of really young girls who just started playing volleyball for the first time and had no idea even how it works, but then they all grew a ton and they improved and they became really good athletes and teammates over the season. And obviously they got good enough to win the championship, so that was really awesome to see them grow and do all that. So. 
And how about if we hear from one of the students, maybe the team captain? Okay, well then how about one of the students stepping on up? Oh, she seems to be eager, come on up. Don't be shy. That's what I like. Absolutely, the mic is yours, Nina. Oh. Whatever you like. Hello? My name is. Oh, my name is Mia. Um, I was part of the volleyball team and uh, we just improved on teamwork and we formed a family and uh, we all worked together and even after we fell a lot and hit each other, it was really fun. You know, the, the, the season's trials and tribulations really uh, bring the, the, the team together and are able to overcome obstacles. And you can see as they are our championship girls this year, and we're hoping to uh, repeat for the third year and have you guys back again next year. Coach, I'm going to go ahead and give you all of the awards so you can hand them out. Uh, thank you so very much. One more time, let's give them a round of applause. Ladies, thank you so very much. Congratulations. Thank you, uh, Councilman Arena. And now, if we could have Councilmember, former Mayor Pro Dem, Saltina Hedl, please uh, step uh, towards the microphone. And if they're the, uh, uh, the wrestlers from Santa High School, if you could please come on down. You have the floor, uh, Councilmember. If we could have the Mighty Saints come on down. As they're coming down, I want to just uh, let you know a little bit about the Santa Ana Wrestling Program. Uh, the Santa Ana, Santa Ana Wrestling Program is an, an award-winning high school boys wrestling team. It has accomplished some great things uh, since uh, Coach Collab has been there. And one of them is winning 23 consecutive league championships. Along with that is winning 12 CIF championships. 10 CIF, uh, 10 of his wrestlers have been the CIF runner-ups. 31 individuals from his team have been CIF champions. And also, he has three Masters champions. Aside from that, he's had two students win the National High School Wrestling Competition. So he's had two national champions. To think about the work that you all do here in the city of Santa Ana. It used to be Calvary, Calvary that's a different Calvary. But you know Calvary Chapel down the street. We, we talk about them every once in a while. They're in Costa Mesa, they don't really count that much. But uh, that used to be the best wrestling team in Orange County until someone had a desire to show that our kids had, have, our kids possess what it takes to win national championships. And that's what's so special about Santa Ana wrestling. And so this season, six wrestlers qualified for the Masters. For you to understand this, there's about 550 wrestlers, and the top six get to go on to the Masters. And if you've ever been to a Masters competition, they're quick, huh? Everybody's fast, they're strong, and they're ugly. But we're ugly too, right? <laughs> and so uh, I just wanted to say that this is something that is truly uh, something that we need to celebrate here in our city and we are incredibly proud of you incredibly proud of you i always tell this because i used to box the only butt kicking i ever took was from a wrestler all of a sudden i was on the ground he had me in a banana split you know what that is i almost cried anyways that's a bad memory let's talk about the good things again so i want to call up the coach coach if you could come up coach clap couldn't make it but coach gonzalez or <coughs> gonzalo perez is here and uh, i just wanted to give you the mic so you can say a few words here good evening Yep. Okay, um, I'm really proud to be uh, associated with uh, these young men. At the beginning of the year, we were not even uh, ranked in the top ten. Top ten. By the end of the year, <clears throat> we, uh, we took second place in the individuals. Uh, and it's a young team, so we are going to be in the hunt for our CIF championship next year, God willing. Thank you. They all work very hard. Well, Coach, I have your certificates here, if you could uh, pass them out to everyone. And I just want to thank you for coming out, and again, keep doing the good work. And one of the things about Santa Ana Wrestling, they always give back to the community, and they volunteer, and they coach kids as, as, as small as three, right? Or five, five. Five to 13 years old to continue this tradition going. So thank you very much for coming out here. Congratulations. You are all champions. Good work.
Okay, now I'm going to direct our attention to the consent calendar. But before that, Madam City Attorney, is there anything to report out of closed session, please? Uh, Mayor and Council Members, we do have a couple of reportable action items. We had four closed session items this evening, three of existing litigation. In the case of David Stone versus the City, the City Council unanimously agreed to settle this case in the amount of $15,000 contribution from the City. In the amount of um, Johnny Hernandez, in that matter, the City Council unanimously approved a settlement of $54,280. And in the Timothy Scoval matter, Another workers' comp case, the City Council agreed to a settlement of $93,662.50. Finally, in the matter of the public employee appointment and employment, the City Council has um, confirmed or affirmed an appointment of a new planning and building agency executive director, also by unanimous vote. Thank you. So with that, um, let's now move our attention to the uh, consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, 25A, please. Okay, 25A. And on 25I, Madam Clerk, I'm going to abstain. I may have received a contribution from some of the vendors associated with that event. So uh, in the abundance of caution, I'm just going to abstain on that. Any other items that council members want to pull? I'd like to move uh, the remainder of the consent calendar, make a motion. To thank you. Thank you, Councilor Member Sarmiento. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a speaker on one of the items. All right, let's pull 25G from that. So I'll entertain a motion on the balance. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed, motion passes unanimously. Uh, so, Councilor Sarmiento, you had an item, and also we have 25G, I believe it is. I did. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just wanted to see if staff could give us just a, pre, uh, just a brief background on this one, uh, Mr. City Manager, is that, or would that be... Uh, which or item? The chief. 25A. I think it might be the chief's item if he, uh, if he yes. wants to address it. I, yes, either one uh, I could do that. This is the crossing guard? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor, Member City Council. Uh, we had previously had this item on the agenda, and we continued it uh, to do more outreach with the, with the school uh, district. We met twice with the superintendent. Uh, we also uh, met with the uh, public safety director for the school district. And uh, based on all those discussions, uh, we had a meeting uh, with the uh, Prey Committee, I uh, know Public Safety, uh, and brought it to the Public Safety Committee. We did a, a thorough uh, review. We have uh, uh, a consensus with the school district for this level of crossing guard services, but I want to assure the mayor and the council that we have a very large uh, contingency of 15%. So if any time during the school year uh, we need to add a crossing guard, we can do that. Uh, and so uh, based on the recommendation of the uh, subcommittee, the consensus with the school district, we're uh, recommending this uh, contract. Great. So the subcommittee recommended this. Uh, so there's a net reduction in the number of uh, crossing guards as a, as a result of this action item. But we do have some, some funds available in the, in the event that we need to adjust if we see some need for that. Yes, ma'am. I know there were some concerns from, from some of our colleagues in the public when this came before us already. But look, I just wanted to make sure that we sure. did a thorough um, vetting of this with the school district as well as us. Um, I just wanted to open it up and make it available for my colleagues if there was any concern or any comments because I know there was the last time around. But thank you for doing all that due diligence in the interim. I appreciate that. Okay, so is that a motion? That's a motion unless there's some questions or concern. Or Let's take a motion in a second. second. Now, are there any questions? No questions. No questions. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before we continue, I'd like for us to contemplate uh, an excused absence for Councilman <laughs> Michelle Martinez. Doesn't have to be a unanimous vote. Maybe a maybe a four-two would give her something to think about. But <laughs> but but maybe unanimous is better because she didn't uh, call in. <laughs> And there's an advantage to that. <laughs> I'll move it based upon that nice preface. I'll second. We have a motion to second. Is it unanimous? Aye. 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 Tell her it was unanimous if she asks, but with discussion. <laughs> so with that, uh, 25 uh, G, I, I think we have Lily Graham. You want, wish to speak to us on, on this item? Please come on down. And after your, you speak, I'll bring it to council for consideration. Just take that other microphone. Yeah. Hi, good evening, South Council Member. Um, I'm here from Public Law Center and we're just willing to address any questions you had about our program. 
Um, we're a pro bono law firm that provide free legal services to, um, to Orange County residents. So if you have any questions about the ESG funding, please let me know. Th thank you. And what, what item was it, Madam Clerk? 25G. 25G? Yes. Got it. Got it. So we're clear on which item we're on. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. You were very persuasive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so with that, um, I think, are we to the uh, uh, business calendar? No, no, let's, let's just right now keep going. <laughs> Michelle's not here, we'll tell her later. Um, 55A, I would entertain a motion. Motion to so move. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 55B, motion I would entertain approve. a motion. Motion to approve. I got a question. Motion, Councilman Reyna will second, and now he has a question. Go ahead, please. Uh, Question for the staff: The bungalows that we're that we're talking about, and I apologize, but if you could uh, share with me which ones are we referring to? Are we the ones talking about the ones that we're currently operating out of now in the back of the Centennial? Uh, correct. They're in the old uh, fire training facility, which okay. is now the police training facility. So those will remain there. I got you. Well, that's all the question I have. Thank you. So your second stands. Absolutely. All right. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Seventy-five uh, A. This is a, a public hearing, and uh, was there a request for a continuance on this? I believe there is. Let's, George, let's just hold off when we take this up. George is good. He's raising his hand. That's a good sign. He's nodding uh, with a friendly yes as well. So... Um, I guess I have a question for staff. Do you, um, was the request just to continue? Do we want to just open the public hearing so it doesn't have to be reposted, and then you immediately close it? You don't take comment, but you open okay. It let me open it? the public hearing. Um, let me acknowledge that I thank God see nobody stepping forward to the microphone because we're not going to take any comment. But we did open it, so I will now close the public hearing. And when we bring this up, I believe in two weeks, uh, we don't have to repost it. Correct. So it's is. George said he's okay. Yeah. We checked in. And you see? Okay. What, how long is the continuance for? It's a, it's a recommendation or request. For the next meeting? So two weeks? Thank you, madam. Okay. So with that, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. motion carries. And thank you, George. <clears throat> thank you. I'm sure your comments will get better in two weeks. <laughs> Good. No, no, but thank you for being here. Um, now, uh, uh, 75B, this is a time and pace for the public hearing relative to the development block grant uh, uh, fiscal year 2015-16. Let me go ahead and open up the public hearing. Mayor, I'll be recusing myself from this one due to my relationship with one of the applicants. And Councilor Rain, I think Mayor, you I'll be do doing the same, same thing. I just wanted to just make a real quick uh, brief statement that I'm, I'm, I'm happy to... Uh, that this program is now back into the hands of, of uh, nonprofits. I love the process that was out there uh, and happy that we were supporting in that direction. And I'm glad that CWG is again used for the nonprofits. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. So, with that, um, let me call on Lily Graham. You wish to speak to us about 75B? And I see a late entry there in Rick Guyton. But that's on another topic, right? Not on this. Okay, so 75B, and then after that, Jillian Flagg. And Jillian, if you're here, you're from Goodwill, just go ahead and sit maybe on the second row, and we'll call you shortly. And then Kathleen Bowman from uh, Weiss Place, a wonderful organization, if you can be on standby as well. Please go ahead, Lily. Um, same comment as earlier. Um, pro bono law firm, and we are excited about the CDBG funding available. Um, we're really hoping to expand... Um, our mobile home advocacy because there's been a lot of issues that we've seen in Santa Ana. So that's why we applied for this um, CDBG funding. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Jillian, are you here? I am. And Kathleen, are you? Oh, there you are. Welcome. Go ahead, please, uh, hello. Jillian. Um, hello, Mayor, and hello, Council Members. 
Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention um, the valuable organization that Goodwill is. We've been in Santa Ana for over 90 years. We could be a valuable resource and this money would be very valuable to us. We would use it for our good jobs program and it would help um, close to 50 if not more Santa Ana residents get and keep jobs and they would get um, job training, get placement and supportive services and uh, we would just uh, really appreciate and um, really abhor you to reconsider or um, allocate some resources um, toward Goodwill of Orange County. Thank you. Thank you, Jillian. I can tell you got an A in penmanship. Um, mm. No, very, look at this. Kathleen, please go ahead. Good evening. Thank you so much, and thank you for uh, Councilman Ray's uh, comments about putting CDBG back into uh, the hands of nonprofits. We really appreciate that. I just want to, I was here a couple of weeks ago. You didn't make a decision then, so I just want to come before you again and encourage you to take the thoughtful, the, the, um, the recommendations from the commission, and we thank you for the support of homeless women here, in Wise, here at Wise Place, that we take the women off the streets of Santa Ana and do move them to self-sufficiency. So thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. You do excellent work, and you've done it for many years, and it makes such a difference in so many women's lives. So with that, um, let me bring it back to council. Let me call on, on Mayor Pro Tem Vince uh, Sarmiento, if I may. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I think um, all of us are real proud of the fact that we've reintroduced this process. I know for many of us, I know I was, I was the mayor's appointee to the Human Relations Commission back when we had one. And we had, I think, a million dollars back then that we used to be able to allocate to different nonprofits and organizations. And it was a great way to be able to share some valuable resources that the federal government gave us. And it was, um, it was a much more difficult process because sometimes when you have more, there's more recipients and there's more you want to do. And, and it just becomes a very... Um, uh, difficult but yet gratifying way to be able to help the community because even though there are services that are duplicative sometimes there's no such thing for our community there's never enough services so even though you may have some agencies that do the same type of work um, the volume of work that we do and the deliverables that many of those nonprofits um, uh, you know go through is just uh, sometimes you know a drop in the bucket from what we what we really need in the community so I, I thank everybody who applied I just wanted to uh, see if um, you know, and, and this is a way we did it before as well. Sometimes um, the recommendations from the commission, uh, and what commission was it? I'm not sure if staff, if you can tell me what commission reviewed this. Uh, was it? Development. Community, community and housing. Redevelopment and housing. Got it. So I know they absorbed the responsibility of the Human Relations Commission when they used to review it. So I want to thank them for their service, and I know that their recommendations are advisory and so they're 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 helpful and they give us a lot of guidance and I think they made some great selections I think it was very diverse the services that they recommended are are, are great uh, you know they're they're they impact different communities but there we, we always realize that there's sometimes room for adjustment to be made and sometimes um, some things that are overlooked so I wanted to see mr. city manager if we could include um, and maybe augment that amount uh, to include the um, support for two um, Applicants that that, that uh, did very well. They provide great services. Um, one of them is here tonight, and, and, and that's Goodwill. And the other one is um, the Illumination Foundation, because I see Irma Hauregui out in the audience, and I know her and Sandra uh, work very closely with them, because as we spoke about homelessness and it being such a pervasive problem in our community, um, we know the Wise Place does a great job, and we have a lot of homeless efforts and shelters and missions. Unfortunately, it's just not enough, and we're trying to tackle the problem, but Illumination Foundation has a great model program that we, we may want to continue emulating, and hopefully other communities will do the same thing. So if we can incorporate those two, uh, Mr. City Manager, I would um, uh, hope you can give us some uh, recommendation based upon that. Thank you, uh, Mayor uh, Pro Tem, Mayor, uh, Member of City Council. That's uh, uh, excellent news. Uh, I didn't know that uh, we had done a million before. So we need to do more, I think, based on that. And um, our budget has improved. We've uh, got some good news on some fronts. And there are some opportunities, I think, uh, during the next two weeks, I can take a look at it 
And uh, the total for those two organizations, Goodwill and the Illumination Foundation, would be $80,000. So uh, if you want to advance the ones we recommended, and I can come back in two weeks uh, with some suggestions on how we could fund the $80,000, uh, we can do that if the, if the council rules. Let's do that. To. Let's go ahead and move So it that's a motion. That. Is there a second from second. council? Good. So with that, uh, those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And I just want to add that, yes, we used to do about a million dollars into this, and I think it was even a little bit above that at one point. So hopefully we can uh, bring it back. The only reason we cut it back was the budget. When we right. went into such a dire situation, we had to keep the doors open, we cut it back. But this is uh, up to 15% of all this money can be used in nonprofits, and I think we ought to have that as a goal. And yes, Mary, please and go I, ahead. I want to say, and you know, the. Uh, I think we, uh, we rise and fall based on procedure, and I think procedure at the end of the day is probably the most transparent way to make sure that, uh, that we allocate these funds, and I, I think we need to continue to do that as we go forward um, and, uh, and vet every single organization properly and go from there. I think I, we've always had a pretty good process. I know it used to be the Human Relations Commission here, yeah, and, yeah. and they would... You were on there, Vince. It'd be like a multi-month process. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A multi-month process. And that million dollars wasn't really because we shut it down, but most of these monies are federal. So as they started shrinking their allocations to different communities, that's why we had to... Everything squeezed. Offset. Little by little, we're coming back. We're coming back, slowly but surely. So with that, um, now I'm going to go to the next item. Is that 85A, Madam Clerk? Okay, we have a few speakers on this item. Um, uh, Rick Guyton and Adrian Rocha, before we take it on, come on up, speak to us, and then we'll, we'll take it under consideration. Please go ahead, Rick Guyton. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. Um, uh, thank you for taking in consideration our resolution. My name is Rick Guyton. I am the Executive Vice President of UFCW Local 324. I'm also the President of the Orange County Labor Federation that unanimously passed this resolution uh, representing grocery workers for the last 25 years here in Orange County. Uh, we have tried to raise the standards of working men and women in the food industry. and. Most of you know who we represent and how hard we negotiate to make sure our members earn fair wages and have affordable benefits for themselves and their families. This employer, uh, El Super, has done just the opposite. For over a year and a half, we have been negotiating with this employer. And you can see within the resolution the many numerous things, not only that they've done to workers, but they've done to communities in disrespecting not just the workers, but the communities. And so this boycott that we have launched uh, late last year uh, has been a huge struggle for not only uh, the, the working families in these El Supers, but the communities. And we know that by getting your support, we can come to a quick resolution in getting fairness and justice for these workers. So I want to thank the council members who brought this resolution forward, and we ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. If you can remain up there for a moment, because we have any questions. Is Adrian Rocha? Go ahead, Adrian, please. Hi, my name is Adrian Rocha. Good evening. Um, well, I've been working at El Super for 10 years in the meat department, and well, we're just trying to get sick days, 40 hours for full-timers, and respect on the job, which we shouldn't even be asking for, but that's the way we feel at work you now. And we would really appreciate you guys, your guys' support. We really need it. Thank you. Um, the only thing I would correct or suggest is in Spanish, super, super. not super. El super. El super. El super. So next time, yeah, el super. And, and, and I mean, that's the way we refer to it in Hispanic. Yeah. It's el super, como un supermercado. It's el super. <laughs> All right. um, but look, I, I, I want to defer to my colleagues that brought this uh, for making the motion the second, but I hope we get a unanimous vote here. And also, I believe we have one store in Santa Ana, right? Yeah. Two. 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 
and there's but there's other stores in other cities. Yes. So you're doing this in those other cities, I, we would assume. Yes, absolutely. Cudahy tonight. Absolutely. Cudahy is voting tonight as well. Huntington Excellent. Park has already done it. Los Angeles is the city of Los Angeles is also going to take it up next week. Excellent. How many stores are in Southern California? There are uh, 43 stores in California, and then they have uh, four in Arizona and two in Nevada as well. So it's 43 in. So it's important. Well, let me defer to my uh, council colleagues that brought this forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming out here. I think it's important that we let people know what's going on in our communities. Uh, as a former Santa Ana school teacher, I'm still a school teacher in Fullerton, but when I was here in Santa Ana, uh, I was able to see firsthand, as I'm sure uh, Council Member Amesqua is, what happens when you have parents who don't work in jobs that pay a livable wage and that don't have health insurance. Our kids don't have the resources at home. They don't have a quiet place to, to study. More importantly, they're heal they have health issues that they're not able to take care of. By s saying to this company, El Super, that, Thank you for that, so That by saying to this company that you need to change your ways and treat your employees with dignity, it trickles down all the way to the child in that family. And it's important that we as residents in the city of Santa Ana continue to encourage good jobs, good jobs, because then our, our, our workers that work here, that work in that super, and at that market, can then go ahead and purchase a house. And you know, when you have home ownership, there's, there's people take care of their, 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 uh, their neighborhoods more. There's an investment in there. It's a huge, huge investment. And so I just wanted to thank you. When, when we talked about this, it was a no-brainer. We have to do this. We've always had that, that paradigm on this council that we're going to go ahead and protect the family. So I thank you, Rick. I don't know how, how you guys do this, but you guys have been at it for such a long time, I, and you still have the energy to do it. So I applaud you for your work. And uh, please tell a friend to boycott El Super until they start to treat our workers with dignity. Thank you, Mr. You're very welcome. Uh, who else would like to speak? Uh, Councilor Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think uh, my colleague to the right, to my right, said it well. So there's not much to say. I just want to thank you both for uh, for bringing this matter, uh, Gilbert. I know that uh, you do a lot of a lot of very good work, and we've always stood with working families up here. And I know my colleagues and I feel very strongly about making sure that people not only have uh, livable wages, good benefits, but also we care about the quality of care. Um, you know, and I think that's what we're we're talking about, you know, benefits and, and salaries and wages, but I understand that there's some, some issues with the way the, um, you know, the goods are being sold and the conditions that people are working in, and that's a real concern because we have families that go there and rely on what's intended to be quality service and quality goods being sold to them, and that may not be the case here, and that's a big concern, and that's where your arguments persuaded me to be supportive of this effort. So I want to thank you all for doing the work that you do, not just here, but uh, all over Southern California and throughout the state. So I'll second the motion. I believe uh, uh, Councilman Dina Hero made the motion. I'll second that. Any additional comment, uh, uh, Councilman Mesquite? As a school teacher, I do want to uh, echo what Councilman Martina Hero said. It's so important that our students have their basic needs met in order for them to excel in school. And uh, when they don't come to school, you know, if parents are making livable wages, there's always the issue of the, are they providing the basic needs for their children. And I can tell you that 100% uh, thank you for, for doing all the work you're doing. Uh, it's well worth it. Councilman Benavides, please. Thank you. I want to thank you, thank my colleagues and UFCW and the, the, the workers here uh, for bringing this uh, before us. I know that a lot of the employees, um, majority if, if not all of the employees at, at these supermarkets are local residents of, of, of our community. Um, and it's important that in our community that the employers uh, provide a fair and dignified work environment. Uh, for that reason, there is a process to be able to uh, for, for the workers themselves to consider uh, forming or, or participating in a labor organization, a union. Uh, and there are uh, uh, laws that require for employers to be able to respect that process. Uh, some of what, I, what I've learned through the information you provided for us is one of the things that, that uh, uh, just frustrates, frustrates me is when there is a lack of dignity and when there is retaliatory action by these large uh, uh, corporations against employees that are simply just looking for fairness and, and, and dignity and, and you've cited situations where that where there has been retaliatory action and that's something that that I think uh, personally I think all of my colleagues here 
uh, take a strong stance uh, against. And for that reason, I'll be uh, definitely standing with uh, uh, with my colleagues, with the FCW, with the workers out there at El Super and supporting this resolution. Thank and you. I want to call on Councilman Ramon, Ramon Reina, please. And I share the same sentiment with uh, all of my colleagues. I had an opportunity to, to meet and speak with some of you guys, and so I won't reiterate the same thing, but I just want to thank you for all the hard work that you're doing to, to improve the quality of life for our residents and our families, and so thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, and let me just add that, uh, you know, this is a multi-year struggle, Rick. How many years have you been doing this? <coughs> what else? What else, Super? No, 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 no. Oh, no, I'm to, for, to, for, I've been doing it for 33 years, 25 here in Orange County. To, to bring justice and, and uh, fairness to the workplace. And we know that what you do is possible because you've succeeded in many other places where they have successful operations, people aren't going bankrupt or running people out of uh, business. So what you're asking for is feasible, uh, just, and fair. So with that, uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, it's unanimous, uh, Madam Clerk. Good luck so, to you all. Thank you, Mayor. And on behalf of the workers, the community, I want to thank you, Mayor, and the council members for your support. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck to you. So with that, I'm now going to go to uh, public comment. And then uh, Irma, if you could come up. And then uh, Theo Hirsch. And then Wilma Peterson, please. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. It's a joy to uh, come up here and seeing the um, proposal on CDBG and to see the Pacific Electric Park being funded. You guys have no idea how happy, how emotional to see that a dream, a thought, a vision has black and white numbers. Thank you, thank you. I mean. We, we've worked sometimes pro, mostly uh, pro on everything, and this is going to be such a turnaround in our community to see that we can work on something beautiful, and as I said, we will be making Main Street, all of Main Street, a wild place to walk through and drive through. Thank you. Thank you, Irma. Don't worry, Cecilia. You're, you're right on here. I'll call you shortly. ETA. I'll call you shortly. Um, Theo? followed by Wilma, followed by Cecilia Aguinawa. So you're coming right up. Uh, I just want to throw something out there um, that <clears throat> it's something that actually bothers me every day of my life when I look at my trash. Because uh, it, I live in an apartment and apartment buildings are not really, uh, anyway, they, they're, they're not recycle friendly, okay? Let's just put it that way. Um, so anyway, I'm proposing an organized effort um, in the community to, to do like uh, community neighborhood gardens and composts. We need a compost and community garden every four blocks or so so people can ha put all their organic waste in the compost and grow gardens in the communities. I'm kind of tired of not having anywhere to put my organic trash and a neighborhood garden would be perfect. Um, I think four blocks or so would be a good, good way. Every, you know, I don't know how, how, how often you would have these community gardens or how, how far you would go, but I, I think four to eight blocks or something like that so people could walk to get to these, you know, some kind of uh, public property somewhere where we can, you know, people have community and stuff like that. Um, so I propose every four blocks or so we recruit neighborhood volunteers, take a small piece of public land for compost and garden growing. It's a very simple idea that just needs a little organization by each neighborhood. And we can begin with a, um, a pilot neighborhood, so to speak, then expand from one neighborhood to the next. This is an idea that will help people not only be healthier and self-sufficient, but to not be so reliant on for-profit corporate industries that compromise our food and treat us like numbers for their bottom line. This is also an excellent way to create a sense of community and bring people together, obviously. Um, also, um, recycling. We need a much more efficient recycle system. I think that uh, Santa Ana should um, start looking into the future and the humanity's survivability and be more progressive about recycling because there's a lot of preliminary trash out there that people just throw in the trash, ends up in the ocean. There's a, there is a um, island 
in the Pacific Ocean, twice the size of Texas, and it's made of plastic. Um, plastic does not biodegrade. The, the oil that we use to make the plastic, does that, it doesn't biodegrade. It just, it just photodegrades into smaller pieces that are fishy, and then we eat the fish, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so there's a lot of preliminary packaging, a lot of dead trees. We don't need to kill trees. There's a thing called hemp. You know, marijuana is on its way to be legalized, finally, but, but uh, they don't talk about hemp enough. Hemp is a replacement for murdering trees. Anyway, so... Theo, if the you can conclude, yellow is the new red. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so... Uh, Anyway, all this stuff that we throw in the trash, you know, all materials that we normally toss, like rubber, wood, glass, plastic, concrete, all this stuff. If we, we could create an industry and take all this stuff that we throw away and put in landfills and dump and stuff like that, and if we could actually make a, an industry in Santa Ana for and the now, poor, now for the homeless. Red, so that's, What's that? You're way out of time, but uh, thank you. Well, thank there's not that many people message. here, so, I mean, I figured... Understood. Did you see the Nam Eatery presentation earlier today? No, I didn't. It's a, a Vietnamese restaurant here in town that's using all, you know, recycled materials and mm -hmm. everything that they put out is biodegradable. But thank you for your message, yes. especially so, so close to Earth Day. It's very appropriate. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a, I didn't even scratch the surface, but yeah. I know you didn't, but you did. Thank you. Wilma, and after that, Cecilia, and then Michael Ibukian, please. Please go ahead. Oh. Hello. Um, thank you for listening. I'm new to Santa Ana. I bought a home here a year and a half ago. And I checked the neighborhood and everything very carefully before I bought. I was very impressed with Santa Ana. That was a year and a half ago. Uh, things are deteriorating in our neighborhood, and I'm asking for help. For speed bumps, I live on Brook and Sheldon, right by McFadden. Can you give us your address, please? 1030 West Brook Street. We are having issues with three hit and runs in the last two months. Actually, there's more, but those are the only three that were reported. Um, it's getting very serious. The driving is crazy. If we had speed bumps, there's going to be little kids getting killed there. I can guarantee it. We have a daycare center there. And it's very dangerous what's happening. And the hit and runs, the drunk drivers, the graffiti, the gangs are moving in. And we've got to do something, and I don't know who to go to to ask for help. Do you, do you know what ward you're in? No. Ward 5? All right, so okay. look, you're going to meet with Councilman Roman Reina. He'll bring in the city manager or chief of police or other department heads as appropriate, and we'll follow up. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Can you just leave uh, your information with the clerk, uh, and we'll follow up. Thank you. Cecilia, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Protein Mayor, members of the council. My name is Cecilia Aguinaga, and I'm a your appointee borough trustee representing the city of Santa Ana for the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District. April 20 to the 24th is uh, Mosquito Awareness Week, and the Orange County Mosquito and Vector Control District would like to make you aware of a few important messages. I would like to invite Jared Deaver. He is the Director of Communications up to the podium to share this information with you. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the Council. It's a pleasure to speak with you again this evening. Um, so I stand before you this evening, though, just to kind of remind you, though, as you're all aware, that 2014 was the worst uh, year on record for West Nile virus in, in uh, Orange County. And in fact, the, the county actually counted for 10 percent of the total West Nile virus cases in the entire United States, 81 of which uh, were, were Santa Ana residents. So those are some staggering numbers to take in um, as, as we move into 2015. So at this time, the district is actually quite concerned uh, that many of the same environmental conditions that helped fuel the West Nile virus expansion in 2014 are still present in 2015. The record drought has continued into its fourth year, 
uh, which means that a lot of a lot of the watering practices that we've asked of our residents have some very unintended um, and very unfortunate consequ uh, consequences. One of those very unfortunate consequences is uh, residents have taken it upon themselves to follow recommendations made by water district cities and the county at large, and that's to uh, not top off their swimming pools, uh, to not keep those, those pools uh, in service. Um, so we did conduct our annual aerial surveillance where we fly the entire county and we look for unknown mosquito breeding sources in backyards. Um, we were very disappointed to discover 3,000 new out-of-service swimming pools in the county. Uh, in the course of 12 months, 3,000 residents have decided to stop maintaining their pools, uh, which greatly contributes to the threat of West Nile virus and other mosquito-borne illnesses. So in the city of Santa Ana, at the, at the end of 2014, you had only 62 uh, out-of-service swimming pools that we had on our catalogs that we were inspecting and treating. This latest aerial surveillance has revealed 203 new uh, out-of-service swimming pools in the city of Santa Ana. So under the right conditions, as you know, these pools can produce hundreds of thousands of mosquitoes every seven days. So it's imperative that our technicians uh, gain access to these properties so that we can inspect them and treat them and prevent any um, further disease in your city. Um, so we're asking the public to report any unknown uh, out-of-service swimming pools if our technicians have not been in contact with you thus far. Um, and then when our in in inspectors ask for access to your properties, to please grant them that they're there to do important public health work um, and uh, contact the district to report any out-of-service swimming pools and a dump and drain. I know it's the winter months, but we need to treat this if you notice the temperatures outside as though it's the middle of summer. And um, if I may, Mr. Uh, City Manager and Madam City Attorney, um, is there a way that we could assist vector control? Let's say they find a swimming pool somewhere and they know that the level's down, it's not being maintained, it's going to become a mosquito breeding ground, and, and yet we're going to come back and say, please don't spray because we don't want you spraying. Right. But what I'm asking staff, and maybe they could come back to council, would be maybe some way we could assist. I know we have community preservation officers, we have neighborhood associations, we have all sorts of resources that vector control may or may not have, and mm -hmm. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to to assist. Go ahead, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, I would agree. I, it, it's a tricky problem because you know we'd have to get releases and waivers from property owners to be able to gain access. I understand what we would be trying to accomplish, which is more than anything just being able to treat these um, you know areas that are dangerous. And we all know that to the extent we can address some of these, this prevents you having to go out and spray. That's correct. And that's a benefit to the entire community. So I don't know if we could get a blanket waiver. I don't think that exists. But maybe a plan, go, maybe an approach. maybe there's a way that we can try to maybe define the area or, or where you have some intelligence. In other words, you have some information correct. on what properties and maybe what areas are more intense. And maybe there's a way that through our code enforcement, as the mayor said, we can just work collaboratively. So the good thing is that um, you know our, our representative to the, at the Vector Control is doing a great job. She brought you here. I'm glad there's communication now. There's a lot more than what we've seen in the past, so it's a good thing. And I think we're talking about exactly what we should be, which are next steps and, and being productive. Your success is our success. Councilor Amesqua? Um, a lot of the neighborhood associations have newsletters that they publish and, and you know send emails to the residents. I wonder if that's a good place to start just informing them. If you have a swimming pool and you're not using it and you're not maintaining it, please you know come out and let us know. We can help you. And, and, right. Certainly. That'd be a wonderful start. Uh, yes. Uh, hold on. Just uh, one more. Okay. Right. Council, yeah, no, I help? just, uh, I, I was uh, witness to what West Nile does to someone. A teacher in the Santa Ana Unified School District who I taught with uh, at Lathrop Intermediate uh, was uh, caught not West Nile virus, and uh, it completely paralyzed him. He, it took him months to start walking again. This is a serious, serious uh, disease out there and I think we have to be very careful and and sometimes we have to go out and assure that we're taking care of the public because sometimes misinformation gets out there but mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're still keeping it on our radar thank you uh, for, bring, for coming out thank you could we could I request maybe that uh, city manager city attorney some of the council members work and maybe bring it back because this is a public safety issue 
yes, I mean, you bring back some approach or something, and if we have to take any votes for action, I'm sure we're ready to do so. We want to cooperate. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So with that, um, Michael, are you here? Come on down, Michael. And George, I know you passed up speaking earlier, but now you want to speak again, so this time get ready because you'll be right up. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Council, Michael Klubnik, and I feel like Rodney Dangerfield here. Mr. Mayor, I'm entitled to three minutes, and last time you only gave me two. But okay. no, who's counting? I don't want to come over there, but I'm here on a very serious note. Go. You guys talk about West Vile violence, how an innocent little thing could look at, almost destroy people's lives. The, what's happened across the street, Board of Supervisors, unholy alliances, with the district attorney, yes, Tony Rakatis, district attorney, the same district attorney that pulled the Elias' son out of his home. Uh, today, the district attorney said, yeah, he will take a case and move forward with it based on a sniffing dog testimony. And yet he'll ignore 89 complaints that I filed saying that there is an illegal cover-up, took a estate of four properties, didn't pay the mortgage. I'm not making this up. You got the documents. Didn't pay a mortgage for nine months, and then sell the property for 50 cents on a dollar, then they give it to their buddy, the fiduciary, and then he sells the property free and clear, occupied, current with rent, 200,000 cash in the bank, and they cover it up. I'm here to tell you, if they've got that shenanigans going on, if they get a flu, you guys are going to get cancer. I'm telling you. They have brought cancer to this county with these unholy alliances of the district attorney, internal auditor, county council, public defender, the list goes on. To, I, they're making these these reckless uh, cover-ups and they're going to cost it's like cancer it's tax your cell but once it hits the organ it's too late you, and you guys are the cell you're one of 34 counties in orange county they're the organ and if they're like riverboat gamblings and making these uh, you know attacking the, the, the major uh, organs of the body you guys are going to suffer, you and your constituents. And I know you guys, I saw how your solidarity with these people. You, every time I come here, you treat people with respect. Over there, it's me, myself, and I, and how I can take a bow to make you know, my political nest. You guys aren't that way, and I commend you for that. But I'm telling you, uh, Elian's not here today. He's going to be in court tomorrow. No attorney. He's going to stand. He's going to beg the court. They're killing my son. Can anybody help me? It's out of your jurisdiction. He goes to every city county. Out of their jurisdiction. He goes to board of super. Out of their jurisdiction. Something's not right with this picture. Elia should not have had his kid ripped from him like he's some kind of criminal. He's not here now. But I'm sure there's a problem with his son. But he's going to be in court tomorrow. I'm pleading on your behalf. If there's anything you could do, call, rattle the cage, you know, something. Somebody's got to be a hero. But I'm telling you, that 21-year cycle, bankruptcy plus 21 years, 2015. We're on the cusp. And if they're doing the shenanigans over the Board of Supervisors, you guys are going to suffer the consequences because cancer is indiscriminate. It'll attack Thank the good you, cells Michael. and the bad cells. It's Thank not you. red yet, though. No, but yellow is the new red. <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank I heard you for you coming that. down. And, and now it's red. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> now it's red. George, come on down. Show them how it's done. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Manager, Chief of Police Rojas. Um, <clears throat> I. Um, I would just like to say that, uh, that we need to do more in relation to uh, climate change. Uh, I saw a program on uh, E-Square, on uh, KCET, the same channel that uh, Mayor, Garcita, Mayor uh, Garcetti uh, grew up on from LA, you know. Uh, <clears throat> very good uh, informative channel that we need to recycle what we use. Now, I would like to... Uh, ask the uh, council and the mayor to ban plastic bags. I mean, I've been seeing them for years and years and years. I call them plastic tumbleweeds, all right? They're everywhere. Nobody cares in here. I talk to the newcomers. Oh, uh, you know, this is, you know, uh, uh, I'm just here to make the money. I don't care. I thought we had uh, laws on the books to prevent, um, uh, you know, trash, you know, the littering, 
and, and it's not being enforced. There's so many, we've got so many books, laws on the books that aren't being enforced. Uh, I can't understand why we even have a, a assembly, uh, state assembly. Uh, <clears throat> and anyhow, uh, I would just like to say that uh, um, from my New Testament and, and Psalms, here it says, righteousness exalts a nation. That's Proverbs 14, 34, okay? Now, we got to do the right thing because, if I mean, this is for our children and our children's children. I just found out I have a grandson. I have a 35-year-old daughter in Australia. She has a, a son, beautiful kid. I just found out last week. So it's like this, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, Polly will be making a trip to Australia soon um, <clears throat> to meet my, uh, my newfound daughter and, and my grandson. Anyhow, uh, I'm just saying there's more that we need to be done in relation to conserving water, uh, recycling, uh, banned plastic bags, because those are made with oil as well. And also, um, I just wanted to bring up... Uh, a note that uh, my t-shirt says a free people ought not only to be armed but disciplined that's from George Washington okay and uh, I'm thinking oh well then uh, the Constitution uh, mandates that we have a, a militia uh, a well-formed militia for a security of the state because there are the FBI has opened up uh, cases in 49 states, okay, I don't know which is the, <laughs> well, that isn't, but 49 states on ISIS. This is, worries me. We just caught, you know, uh, I mean, if they want to go, let them go, but just don't let them come back. I mean, uh, they're not born here. These are Somalis, uh, immigrants that, uh, that got uh, uh, refugee money, you know, uh, business loans with no uh, interest. This, I, I, I can't understand this. What happened to the Native George, American? George, it said, but also disciplined, right? Yes, sir. And the light is now red, but okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you, George. Right. Thank you for your words. They're much appreciated. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, it's Lon Martin, maybe? Loani Martin? Come on down, please. And then Ramon Hernandez. And after that, uh, Pierre Espino, I believe it is. Please go ahead. Good evening, thank you. My name's Lori, and I did not have good penmanship this evening. I'm actually a principal here um, in Santa Ana. We're opening up a brand new public charter, um, Vista Heritage Charter School, and I just wanted to make you aware that we were here, and we wanted to say hi, and we welcome you to see our charter school. Um, we're in Fairview and off of West 5th Street. So I just want Fairview and... What? Fairview and 5th. And 5th? Yes, we're at Templo. Okay. So what district is that? So you may ought to meet with them as well. You're going to be busy. Thank you for coming Thank down you. and for presenting yourself to us. Ramon, and after Ramon, uh, Pierre Espino. Uh, good evening, esteemed City Council. My name is Ramon Hernandez. Uh, I want to I, I wanna applaud my, my neighbor, Wilma, for coming down here and speaking uh, on, on behalf of our neighborhood of Pico Lowell. I'm the, I'm the neighborhood president uh, Pico Lowell. So uh, she just she just mentioned the the three hit and runs in the past two months. I, I think one happened in November uh, where the the guy hit a car on the side of the street and he wanted to wanted to go away on foot and all the neighbors got together and they all apprehended him and uh, you know that's just one of many hit and runs that are happening but that's just one of many things that are going on in our neighborhood you know everything from that to uh, cars speeding through through the street through Shelton Street where we uh, in between McFadden and and Bishop we have no speed bumps uh, but there's speed bumps uh, on the surrounding areas. Uh, uh, I would like some speed bumps. I know that there are reasons why we don't have any, but I mean, also, there are reasons why we should have some. Uh, other than that, uh, we have uh, produce trucks that's, that have decided to squat uh, in our neighborhood. They don't move. They never move. I know that that, that, that topic has been brought up uh, at past uh, council meetings. Uh, back in November of 2013, the, uh, there was a walkthrough in, in the neighborhood. With, uh, with the city manager and, and uh, the council members, I wasn't there because I, I hadn't, uh, I, w I wasn't involved then. But uh, I know we've we've been asking for uh, an update 
from uh, and, and I've seen uh, I've seen change positive change in the neighborhood but uh, I would like an official update you know you know what what's been going on what's going on what's going to happen what uh, where are we at as far as uh, the food trucks go you know things of that in nature but I, I definitely want to commend my, my neighbors are coming out and the more neighbor I mean the more neighbors I, I, I get to come out the more you're going to see me so uh, thank you very much I know the yellow is a thank new you. red thank you very thank much thank you thank you Ramon and I, I know that uh, Councilor Reyna is going to be following up on some of those things. Maybe we can include that as well. It's your night tonight. It's your night tonight. Uh, uh, Pierre Espino, I believe it is. And I may have the name wrong here, but uh, P-I-E-R-R-O. You're on. Yeah. I got it? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Um, third time, I believe. And uh, never my intention to be here, which I love. Uh, my friend Theo was just coming along, so I thought I'd say hi and share some thoughts. I had real true intentions to share, I guess, what they call propositions or declarations to follow through with some things. Uh, so I held my fingers to consider them. If I uh, could share a story, uh, I came back from Texas with my godson, and this is really, really nice. Uh, we get visited by bees. The bad intention of it is it's done with chemicals to remove them. It was always a tragic feeling until I realized their support, like the backyard bees and other things. From there, I decided to call them, got them safely removed. It was a beautiful experience. Uh, I spoke with a, one of the tenants who works there, and he shared with me a story of his grandfather talking about uh, the land where he was from. Half of the town was plowed to create housing. It was all trees. Uh, they said a huge tornado ripped through everything, destroyed everything of the new housing, and right before it reached the trees, uh, it dissipated. And so the entire town decided to plant trees again. Uh, that, for me, has been a, a, a very moving thing to hear, since my whole intention is to bring back trees, bring back life, respect, appreciation, all these things. Um, so that's my first thing. Uh, my father was a part of the... Uh, creating the cement channels, all the water channels we have through Santa Ana, all the way up. And uh, I realized that that's brought our understanding of how to control water. But now we need to understand and come back to our natural state and uh, find that balance between civilization and nature. So what I'm proposing is that we really get together and just bring nature back, uh, plant, as many plants as we have to, all the way through the Santa Ana River, uh, create natural water channels, like all the channels that we got blocked off. The reason why people litter so much is because there's nothing to cherish there. And so we get all this trash that goes out into the ocean. But that simple change could be done if we open all these up. I've spoken with Moed, and you know he's already been doing it. And there's so many people, of course, doing some wonderful things, but... Um, it's another person I got to meet who shares that type of thought. Uh, if we just open up all the water channels that we have that are blocked off, make them into uh, bike trails, all that type of wonderful things, put fruit trees everywhere, let everyone live in some abundancy. Uh, also, of course, bring you know police to scout, go everything, keep everything safe, which is, I know, which, uh, the water channel got closed off off of Valley. I live off Thank of Fairview McFadden, and that was my first example to see that water channel just go into the worst thing ever. Pierre, thank you. I think it's, it's red, but thank you for your and, spirit uh, and your thoughts. Right over here, I believe we're in the district, and so, yeah. Another meeting. Honored. Thank you again. Good. So, so with that, um, Roman, Roman has like five minute. meetings out of this. Yeah. This is good. Um, let's go ahead, uh, City Manager, any uh, comments this evening? Yes, uh, Mayor, very brief comments. Uh, we've had three budget meetings. They've been well attended. We have two more, one on the 23rd and one on the 28th of April, and we encourage people to participate. The 20th annual Summer Youth Job Fair will be held Saturday, and uh, we've got lots of jobs, uh, not only in the private sector, but the city's hiring interns this summer. And then, uh, believe it or not, uh, Cinco de Mayo Festival. Uh, May 1st through the 3rd, downtown. Uh, very excited, wonderful entertainment. We encourage everybody to participate. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And with that, we have uh, 
six minutes, and it's still not even seven <laughs> o'clock yet. So let's let's go over to the left. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Angie. Uh, just a quick thanks to Mr. Mark Payan. I did have the opportunity last Wednesday to get out there and work out with the Payanics group over in Santa Ana Stadium. Um, it was a really good workout. If, any, if anyone is interested, it's Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. It's free community workout session for anybody who wants to get up at 5 in the morning. Um, it, it was really fun, so I encourage anyone that wants to get fit to get out there and work out. Thank you. Councilman Ramon, Ramon Reina, please. Sure. <laughs> like always, as you can tell... Uh, we have some serious water issues the first time in, in, in our history that the state is actually mandating a, a, a reduction. And so it's very imperative that we all uh, conserve water, but more importantly, just be water wise. Uh, everybody changes uh, uh, their, their, con their consumption a little bit differently. It'll, it'll definitely go a long way. Uh, so please be water wise. Uh, second, this past weekend we had an opportunity to participate in Relay for Life. Uh, phenomenal events. They actually exceeded their goal of $25,000, so definitely applause to all the, the, the chairmen and, and, and uh, people that were involved with that. I know myself and my colleague had an opportunity to kick it off. Uh, I was there for the entire 24 hours and still, still trying to catch up to that sleep. My age is catching up to me. Uh, but I think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, event. This is something that transcends every line that you could think out there. It's, it's not a, a young person or an old person or a Republican or Democrat or, or anything in between. This is something that truly unites the entire community or has the, the potential of doing so. And, and with that, within that, I'm going to challenge uh, people next year to participate. I'm going to challenge the business community, the school districts and, and, and different clubs that exist, uh, the city and the different departments that are out there, the, the nonprofits, uh, to come together to really advocate uh, uh, and, and showcase that we can come together for a common issue and fight a horrible disease, in this case, uh, cancer. Uh, so I'll definitely put the challenge out there to you guys. Um, second, third, fourth, wherever we're at, uh, this coming weekend is a semi-annual youth conference at the Boys and Girls Club with Partnership. We have over 100 students registered for a free 23-hour event uh, for high school students to participate in and uh, self-growth uh, and to dedicate 23 hours is absolutely huge. Uh, so if you have some time, please come out this weekend at the Santa Ana Boys and Girls Club. really doesn't matter what time because we'll be there. Uh, let's see. Uh, shop in Santa Ana like always. Uh, and before, we do, before I do finish, tomorrow is uh, Administrative Assistance Day. So I definitely want to thank all of our administrators, assistants that, are, that contribute to uh, the overall scheme of services uh, to our community. Many times you're behind the scenes. Many times uh, you're not on the radar. But your work is imperative for, for the overall uh, team uh, and making it very successful. We cannot do it without you. So I definitely wanted to give you guys as much kudos as possible. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you very thank much you. for that. Councilman Benavides, please. Thank you, Mayor. I um, wanted to ask our uh, staff for, we, we had an item on the agenda earlier, and there was some question regarding the Ron Santiago Community College District and, and providing a couple of uh, modulars to the city um, over at Centennial. But it did, it did uh, one of the questions, and, and a question I had uh, as well, just seeking an update on the, uh, the, the, the Centennial Education Center and potential relocation or extension of lease and uh, and that question, you know, there's been some, we've been in conversations with them for some time. Uh, there's a, a, a couple of uh, over two acres there that are in question as to whether they would be coming back for public space or we would be, whether we would be potentially uh, permanently giving it away. And so I want to make sure that we're uh, brought into the loop on, uh, on, on the progress in those conversations. Um, there at that same park, uh, right across the way, actually, from the, the current uh, education center, there's a skate park, which is very uh, uh, well utilized by a lot of the young people in our city. That's the only one that we currently have. Uh, I know that there is an uh, uh, item on the agenda for the Board of Park and Recreation uh, tomorrow to discuss uh, the topic of skate parks throughout the city. Councilwoman uh, Martinez and myself were at a, at a meeting uh, a neighborhood meeting last a few weeks ago where the topic came up uh, just want to get uh, a brief uh, to to the council uh, there are pockets throughout the city where there are very limited um, recreation opportunities for young people and it's just an opportunity for a uh, health uh, opportunity fitness opportunity but then also just something that a positive uh, uh, activities for for young people to to be involved in I think that uh, we should start looking at uh, other areas where we could potentially expand uh, our skate park and create a skate park system or network within the city. 
Uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, city manager at Cinco de Mayo coming up. You know, one of the things I often mentioned there is just Santa is an exciting city and place to be. And, and the first weekend in May is actually one of the the, uh, the most exciting uh, of the year. It happens to be both Art Walk um, uh, and, and and Cinco de Mayo. Uh, brought together so our, our downtown will be very active and want to encourage folks to come out uh, and with that support the city support uh, business uh, and culture in our community and, and to shop and spend a, a few bucks uh, supporting local jobs and uh, local business and have a great time so with that thank, thank you everyone. thank you and with that um, former mayor pro tem Saltina Hedl. thank you mr mayor appreciate it i like to be remembered i appreciate the, <laughs> the history um uh, it, it was a great event uh, this week. Uh, I was able to go to the McFadden Intermediate 50th anniversary. Uh, it was really nice because I got to meet the first principal at McFadden Intermediate, and uh, it was it was nice to uh, go down memory lane. I was able to see some pictures of some old friends back in the 80s, which was uh, interesting. Hairstyles and, and the dress was interesting. Uh, I also was uh, allowed to be principal for a day. I didn't mess up the school too much. It was, it was pretty good, so I had a good time there. I was also at the Relay for Life. I was looking for you, Roman, and uh, Councilmember Benavides. I was, I was at the Relay for Life. I went in, put a check in, took a sip of some coconut juice, and left. They said, aren't you going to walk the track? I said, no, I came to give my support this way. You know, I didn't want to. I was checking my, my pulse. No, it was great. A uh, great event, and I do I do agree. I, th I think uh, we could do some more, and I think that uh, they exceeded their expectations, which was great. Right. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm I'm just really excited today is as I was driving in, I was driving over to the city. One of the things that I noticed is uh, the school district has done a great job of really building up their infrastructure and their fields and their facilities. The tennis courts look beautiful. They have artificial turf in a lot of different areas. The sports complex is coming up. And uh, we've done the same. And it's just what a difference uh, a couple of years makes. You know, with, and and you, you, could, you could see the pride in our parents when they talk about it. And then more importantly, our students and our kids are excited to now go and participate in sports. In these sports that once were dormant. I, w I was driving down McFadden Intermediate, and it was jam-packed. The tennis courts were jam-packed with kids. And I, I thought, wow, we're really making strides. And it's everyone putting a little bit of effort into different areas. And everyone's passionate about something. And I just, I just want to say, let's just keep it going. Uh, we have a great group up here. We have a great quarterback here in the city and a great staff. And um, I just want to applaud everyone because, honestly, uh, people are starting to see the turnaround, not just in the downtown, but all over the, the city. And uh, I'm just really proud today. I'm proud to be a part of this team. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and thank you for that. Now to our current mayor pro tem. And, you know, we just broke uh, 7 o'clock, so I was hoping we'd I know. I was, too. So <laughs> at this point, you can Since talk we'll a lot. beyond. Because we're uh, not going to be able to tell Michelle we got here before to, 7. Now I'll speak freely. No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll keep it brief. But I also wanted to thank staff as well. And talking about Relay for Life, I, Mr. City Manager, I wanted to commend one of your staff members because even though I didn't spend 24 hours on the track, what I did in advance was I think there was an issue with respect to the site. It was at the Santa Ana College, and there was issues with the food not being able to, being able to be brought there by some of the uh, vendors, and that's the way they, um, they raise funds is they sell some of their food there, and licenses and permits from the health department were hard to get at the last moment. But uh, Mark Lawrence from our staff, the staff from the Santa Ana College, uh, Trustee Solorio and Alvarez uh, uh, helped out, and Chancellor uh, uh, Raul Rodriguez and all of us got together and said, look, we have to be able to make this work. So please, uh, k kudos to, to everybody, and, and especially Mark, for doing that at the last moment. It was a very 11th hour thing. But look, those things make that event successful because if you can't raise money then what's the point in raising awareness it's a uh, it's it's sort of their lifeblood but I wanted to thank everybody and I'm and, and I can thank you and your staff again for the upcoming budget because what we're looking at now is we're looking at realizing things like um, you know the Pacific Electric Park we have an opportunity to bring in another park online standard in McFadden which is not part of our park system but it might be able to be absorbed and you know it's just a very exciting time because now when I speak to people we're talking about dreaming about realizing things that we once only thought were you know weren't possibilities because the funds were so tight so 
thank all of you for hanging in there with us, and especially the folks over in South Maine. I know there's some settlement funds that we had a nice conversation with uh, the board over there about them giving us some direction about what they'd like to see after after uh, some discussion with everybody. But look, I think that South Maine is the next downtown. I truly believe that, and I think with OCTA's help, I think they're going to help us slow down the traffic. We turn it into a, a, a district that we can brand for merchants to be successful, and it's not just a pass-through corridor anymore. I think we'll be able to really change lives, make it an exciting place, and we shouldn't just have a downtown. We have 350,000 people here. We should be able to have more clusters of areas where people can go enjoy themselves and have a good time. So um, that's going to be the next the next big place here in the city. Um, finally, I um, want to thank everybody who's um, been conserving water. We've done a great job, and I saw an email from the city manager saying that we're going to be leading by example and trying to reduce our, uh, our our consumption as well. But since we came out, and I see Nabil in the audience, since we came out and did the voluntary request for people to reduce their consumption, we've gone down 4% from an already very, very low increment uh, compared to other communities. So thank you uh, to all the residents for doing that. And um, it's not a simple thing to do. We all love our beautiful lawns, but I think all of us are going to be, including me, are going to be reducing um, our water consumption, and our lawns may be getting a little bit more yellow, a little bit more brown, but hopefully it's a temporary thing, and the hydrology, hydrology changes and the climate changes, and we're able to get more, um, you know, more rainwater and just uh, you know, better recycling efforts, and we'll be back to where we were. But with that, I want to wish everybody a safe uh, Cinco de Mayo and a, a good night. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And uh, I just have uh, two items. Um, one is that um, I agree that you know things are going better and better and better in the city. Uh, but I have a, maybe a little bit of a longer perspective. Um, I see things like you know Bristol Street that's taken us literally many, many, many years to get to where we are now, although now we're starting to see the benefit. But it's been a, believe me, a multi-decade project. Um, I see things like the federal courthouse that in the 90s we were fighting Irvine to bring it here to Santa Ana, and now it's a gorgeous, you know, Ronald Reagan federal courthouse. I see the fourth uh, district court of appeal and the big battle we had with UCI to, 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 to win that and bring it here. I mean, I see, you know, Bowers and, and the record numbers of people coming to Bowers and such a beautiful museum that it's now become. I remember when it was empty and they were ready to give us the keys back and, and they were saying we don't really want to operate it anymore. And, and now look at it. Uh, I mean, I see the Science Center now one of the top 20 in the country and, and, and how well it's doing. I see the zoo and some of the exciting projects that are there. But just as an organization, an institution, there's just more and more people visiting the zoo. Um, I see, you know, modern day high school. I remember when they were getting ready to leave the city. The diocese was really saying we're going to close down Modern Day and move it to South County, move it somewhere else, and we fought hard to keep it here. Now it's not only here, boy. If you've gone to Modern Day lately, it's 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 amazing what they've what 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 they've done there on on campus. And you know, I see our schools in general throughout the city with the different school bonds that we passed, not only at the college but also at the Unified District, and 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 even uh, and I say even because sometimes we don't focus much on on the west end but over in garden grove the schools are doing well as well on the you know west of the river um, and i see beautiful projects like the skyline that i believe if we work hard and, and push folks those high-rise projects will come again to the city and and they're really really beautiful assets that were done years ago but now it's all coming together and and it's just singing a beautiful beautiful song and talking about beautiful things we had an employee here, Sharon K. Hennigan, uh, who was with us 23 years. She gave a lot of her life to the city, and unfortunately, she recently passed away. I just want to say a few things about Sharon and then close in her honor. Uh, she was born to a military family in 1959, July 5th to be exact. Uh, she began her career shortly after graduating uh, uh, college um, here in the city of Santa Ana. She began as an administrative assistant, and then she became a contract employee to the city's cable television division. She then worked on a series of projects, came back in the city manager's office, and many of you, I, I, I know Fran, for example, you'll remember her well. You know, she was in the finance department uh, and the community development department. Um, you know, she was a great listener, she was intelligent, she was organized, she was always respectful, genuine in her interactions, loved by her fellow employees, 
and and after many years here in about 2010 her husband uh, Daryl uh, was diagnosed with uh, an operable brain tumor and so she retired she left the city to go take care of him unfortunately he passed away relatively quickly and so after that great uh, difficult tragic event she decided to unretire and came back to the city here in, in, in 2012 and then unfortunately after she came back she also contracted cancer so not only having your husband die of cancer now you have cancer she had cancer you know she she had to retire again and unfortunately very recently April 12th she lost her battle to cancer and now she leaves uh, you know three beloved young daughters uh, as her survivor and one of her daughters Kelsey um, uh, wrote something that I'm going to read but I also want to mention her other daughter Kendra and also her mother Shirley uh, Lewemski who are uh, now along with her sisters and brothers the uh, the survivors but her daughter Kelsey wrote this and she read it recently at her memorial she said is it is with my uh, heart hanging heavy and within my chest an impossible weight a choked cotton dry ball clinging to my throat and eyes bleary from too many tears shed for one day that I share these news she passed surrounded by loved ones at 839 Sunday night words far short they fall me in the moment I most desperately grasp they fail me in the moment I most desperately grasp uh, for their help to convey my simultaneous grief and anger and anxiety over the loss my sense of relief and acceptance of the cessation of her pain the suffering that grew so fear these past few days my longing for her missing her presence already and knowing the absence that will only grow sharper and more suffocating as time pulls me further from her memory I seek something to help me convey the grace of my mother honor of her memory and celebrate her bright light but everything feels too contrived too cliche against such a fresh wound in Leo flowers please consider a donation her honor to the world hunger project the cause mom and dad supported as long as I can remember and you know Sharon was such a lovely person um, all of those that had the privilege and the honor and the blessing of working with her I think should take you know her suffering and lesson just to cherish everything we have and to thank God for every day that we have every moment that we have all the blessings that we have because for her death definitely came too soon and now she leaves her young daughters and uh, obviously well educated and are able to speak so eloquently uh, but uh, you know she is now gone and so uh, madam clerk if we can please uh, you know dedicate not only the closing of this meeting but also give the family the heartfelt condolences and i hereby adjourn this meeting in her memory <laughs>